you know, there, there's molecular reasons that all, all this works, but you know, trust me, that the, the data is very clear that this is the way to go if you want to be healthy in your 80s and 90s. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve Lund, and in this video, we're going to react to uh, Dr. David Sinclair on Joe Rogan's podcast, where he talks about how fasting and like these different kinds of stressors, how they affect your longevity. Make sure you click like and subscribe as well for future videos about health and performance. The other thing is, which I do, uh, is to skip meals. So it's not that hard. I, I now feel weird if I eat a meal for breakfast or lunch, and I try not to snack too. This, this idea of nutritionists, three meals a day plus snacks, never be hungry, is killing us. It really is. And we know that if you do these things to animals in controlled settings, they live longer, a lot longer, 20, sometimes 30%, because they're healthier for longer. They don't get cancer and heart disease and uh, dementia. So I don't know why we don't all do that. I just think we just like to sit around and eat. Everyone's Right. So, yeah, he refers to this um, one of the biggest uh, or the, one of the best ways to actually know how to extend lifespan in other species is calorie restriction, as well as like intermittent fasting, uh, time restricted eating, eating uh, mimics those same effects as calorie restriction in research. So uh, you see those uh, like uh, life extension benefits, uh, even if you're not really reducing that many calories or at least like not as much. So you probably still won't get away with overeating. Uh, but at the same time, you can, you know, you can eat a bit more calories without feeling that you're suffering or without feeling that you're starving because the intermittent fasting is a similar stressor to the body as calorie restriction but it's almost like it's like magnified in a way so um, if you're eating constantly throughout the day then you're still you know providing your body nutrients and you're not allowing your body to basically turn on these longevity genes and p pathways in the body that are associated with this small stressor that it experienced from fasting or exercise and calorie restriction. It's, it's good. It feels good. Just <laughs> eat chips. Yeah, have don't do what just feels good. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But is there like, so when you talk about um, how eating one meal a day can extend your life, is it because when you're eating all the time, you're taxing your digestive system, which taxes your resources, or is there some sort of a, a, a mechanism that leads to decay of the human body from overconsumption? Like, what is it? Yeah, so overconsumption or just consumption in general makes your body complacent. And we know this in great detail at the molecular level. There are genes that respond to how much you're eating and what you're eating and whether you're exercising. And these are called longevity genes. And they give our body resilience and fight aging and slow down what we can now measure the biological clock. So I can take your blood. Hmm. So here's, yeah, again, mentioning that I just uh, talked about as well, that there are these different longevity genes in the body, longevity pathways that are most of the time they lay dormant. They're turned off because you're not really needing them. They only get activated if your body is under some kind of a stressor. Uh, like environmental physiological stressor uh, that you know tells the body in essence that hey you need to you know s slow down the aging process you need to become more resilient you need to slow down these uh, reactions and in so doing you know you see this uh, decrease in the speed at which you're aging i wouldn't say that you know one meal a day is necessary to see those benefits uh, like uh, if you're not overeating calories you're exercising as well then you see those benefits even as little as like 16 hours of fasting or something with two meals a day etc so yeah you don't need to you know push it that much hard or that far with this uh, fasting and time she's eating uh, you know Sinclair um, as he says later he's eating one meal a day I've been doing it for the f past few years and uh, yeah I don't think it's n inherently like superior you know, in theory it would be more effective but like I said you can also turn on these uh, gene longevity pathways uh, with things like calorie restriction uh, fasting uh, exercise saunas cold all these uh, hormetic stressors uh, have a similar effect and I've actually written like an article about it as well, like different articles, videos about these uh, longevity pathways. And the main ones, I'll just, you know, briefly mention them. There's the growth hormone insulin, like uh, insulin, IGF-1 uh, growth signaling pathway. So this is, you know, the one usually related to uh, growing and uh, it gets turned on if you're spiking your insulin, you're eating something that has calories and um, especially carbohydrates and proteins. So you're elevating this uh, growth signal if you're eating and this suppresses the other longevity genes such as, you know, cell recycling through the process of autophagy uh, or sirtuins, which are also these, uh, another one of these longevity genes, proteins. So yeah, just eating all the time may uh, suppress these longevity pathways. Disappointed! And uh, next one is uh, FOXO transcription factors, which are kind of stress resilience, you know, proteins that uh, regulate energy homeostasis. So when your body is under energy stress, if it's doing this hormetic stress by fasting, exercise, calorie restriction, anything cold, then uh, it's going to, you know, also a a activate these antioxidant defense systems, promote autophagy, uh, regulate your energy metabolism. And uh, that sort of thing has like a beneficial effect on longevity because of that. And uh, next up is sirtuins and sirtuins and NAD+, which is, you know, Sinclair is an expert in. So uh, sirtuins are also similar to these longevity genes or proteins that uh, have a similar effect as FOXO proteins, but they also 
regulate things like NAD. So NAD is a very major coenzyme in the body that is uh, responsible for you know virtually everything, starting from energy production, ending with uh, digestion, ending with uh, just uh, methylation, and uh, almost everything requires some NAD. And with low NAD, you see this accelerated aging because your body doesn't have like the resources. And uh, yeah, sirtuins get activated in response to this energy stress, which then helps with the recycling of NAD and production of NAD. And uh, yeah, fasting does it, exercise does it, uh, calorie restriction does it, even different kinds of foods that do it, like these different uh, dark polyphenols, uh, pigments, uh, vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, uh, berries, uh, those also activate sirtuins and then help with NAD. Plus, you know, you actually also need to be uh, circadian rhythms. Your circadian rhythms also be, need to be aligned when it comes to the sirtuins and NAD because both of them are regulated by the circadian rhythms. So if you're, let's say, doing all, everything right in terms of fasting, exercising, eating a good diet, eating these um, polyphenols, but your uh, sleep schedule sucks, it's uh, out of sync uh, with the natural environment, uh, or you're sleeping very irregularly, then uh, you may not actually see those uh, benefits get uh, fully turned on because of this uh, circadian mismatch. A lot of the NAD is, uh, most of the NAD is produced through, let's say, circadian uh, rhythm alignment. So you need to have actually the circadian rhythms uh, working properly before you do anything else. And lastly, there's also these Yamanaka factors, which are relatively new. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, they also got uh, like a Nobel Prize for uh, a few years ago. But they're just like these reprogramming factors with these different kinds of uh, complex names that uh, re regulate cell rejuvenation and uh, reprogramming. So they have like an epigenetic effect on your system. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. And what is going on with eating? So if you have one meal and say this meal comprises uh, you know, 2,000 calories or whatever, and you have this meal at 6 p.m. and you fast for 24 hours until you eat again at 6 p.m. If you have this one meal a day, why is it better to do that than to have say, you know, smaller meals of like 500 calories multiple times per day, little snacks. Well, because going back 6 million years back, you know, we're in the trees and then in the savannah, our bodies were designed, well, or evolved to respond to adversity. And we've removed that from our lives because it feels good. But we need adversity to be resilient and to fight disease. So what I'm saying is that period of hunger, and it's not even hunger these days, I don't even feel it. I feel great if, if I don't eat. And it, it takes a few weeks. So anyone wants to start Make, give it some time, give it a couple of weeks. But what's happening in the body is you're turning on these adversity hormesis response genes. We call them longevity genes. And they make the body fight aging and diseases. And so by by eating through the day, the traditional, oh, you're going to have breakfast, best meal of the day, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to just add a little bit that, uh, yeah, there's actually is a lot of research about these uh, hormesis and longevity genes uh, having a positive effect on uh, life, lifespan. Hormesis you know, describes this uh, dose-specific response to a stressor like you experience an injury or you experience some kind of physiological stressor like heat, cold, exercise, dietary restriction, calorie restriction, uh, fasting, and your body responds to it like, okay, we are under this stress and therefore, you know, we have to, I don't know, you know slow down the process of aging, at least for the time being, in this temporary state. We uh, halt it, at least for the time being, so that we could resume it in the future. So I think that that needs to be thrown out the window. Kids are different. We're not talking about kids, we're talking about adults. And we're not talking about malnutrition or starvation too, let's be clear. But we are talking about lengthening that window of not eating. So if you always are, are satiated, fed, your body says, hey, I've just killed an, you know, a mammoth. No problem. Don't need to worry about survival. I'm just going to go forth and multiply and screw my long-term survival. Mm. So this is all about long-term survival by making the body freak out that there's tough times. And that's running away, like running away from a cat, like the savannah, and being hungry. Or, you know, there's molecular reasons that all, all this works. But, you know, trust me, that the, the data is very clear that this is the way to go if you want to be healthy in your 80s and 90s. Mm. So yeah, I'm not like I wouldn't like you know say that you need to do the one meal a day or something like that to live longer because you know all the longest living people in the history like the ones who lived until 125, then they didn't do any of this uh, fasting or they didn't do any one meal a day or something like that they ate like re regularly. But the reason they you know probably had good genes, but at the same time they also experienced these different kinds of beneficial stressors like uh, they didn't overeat calories, they had some form of calorie restriction. Uh, they probably had a diet higher in these polyphenols and phytonutrients. They uh, exercised regularly in terms of, you know, staying physically active, not necessarily going to the gym and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so, yeah, that is true that we are living in a very, uh, let's say, protective environment. Our environment is very safe. We don't experience any positive stressors. We don't experience any alterations in the heat, the cold. Uh, we are eating all the time, snacking. We don't exercise, etc. And that is 
making us weaker and that weakness is accelerating our aging. So that is definitely true. So we do definitely need to Im implement these different kinds of positive stressors into our life, like uh, fast some, some, some sort of uh, time restricted eating, eating uh, then some, you know, not overeating calories, losing weight. That is a very important part because the, I would imagine that the fasting is not going to work. It's not going to have a positive effect on your longevity if you're still overeating calories and if you're still obese. So you have to kind of lose the weight first. And fasting may be like a, just a beneficial one of the, one, one method of many that is, uh, helping you to do it. And of course, exercising regularly and maybe engaging in some other of these uh, positive hormetic stressors like, uh, the cold, the heat and that sort of thing all right everyone chill if you like this video then make sure you also click like and subscribe if you want to know how to implement these kinds of hormetic activities and stressors positive stressors into your life then check out my book stronger by stress but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click like subscribe notification bell as well my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered